Hello. Okay. Um, yeah, this is uh, the first uh, exercise for PHREC. And uh, for uh, this demonstration, this relay, to show how to use some of the basic functions of PHREC. First, let's just write in this very simple data set with three variables, time, death, and group. Time, survival time, uh, group is the censoring variable, and group is the uh, treatment group. So let's uh, submit that to SAS to create that variable. And then we, um, because the group variable has a 1 and 2 value, so we change it to the 0, 1. So we uh, use the data step to create another variable called example 8 underscore. One. Okay. So we just uh, don't like to use the class statement somehow. Um, after we recreated the data set, uh, now this is the bare bone SAS code for fitting a PH reg uh, Cox proportional hazard regression model for survival time uh, in two groups. And as you can see, uh, this is the output and uh, the um, data set, the dependent variable, the censoring variable, sensor value, and ties handling. So the default is uh, Breslow. Okay. Uh, you don't have any missing observations. Um, and uh, it also shows a summary of number of events and censored values. Okay. Convergence status uh, give you some model fit uh, statistics. And uh, this is really based on the partial likelihood. The global null hypothesis testing uh, shows that uh, it's worthwhile to fit uh, some of the, uh, not some of the, fit the group uh, treat, uh, assignment variable compared to just the model with the, just the intercept. And then you see the p-values uh, showing the group is significant. Uh, the two groups have significant different uh, hazard ratio, uh, hazard functions, and you can see the hazard ratio uh, is 2.665. And then uh, you say, okay, I, I don't want to see confidence interval for the hazard ratio, so the only thing you need to do is add a slash rl uh, to the model statement. So here is your uh, confidence interval for hazard ratio. Okay, the next one is really about handling ties in the data. So this piece is a very small chunk of the formatting uh, variables. Uh, and this is the data set. Okay, so let me uh, read it in. Um, so the uh, this data set has uh, also uh, time, in fact, and placement. Uh, time is the survival time. In fact, uh, uh, is the, um, I think, the censoring variable. And placement is the group variable. Uh, if you look closely, you can see there are ties in the survival time, like 8.5, 8.5. And here you have uh, 2.5 and 2.5. So this is, uh, uh, oh, here you got lots of them, 0 0.5 repeated multiple times. Uh, so these are called the ties. OK, so we need to handle uh, these ties. Uh, the first, we create two variables, z1, z2. And z1 is um, uh, basically uh, placement minus 1. So it's 0 when placement is 1, 1 when placement is 2. Okay. And now, uh, Z2 is the log transformed survival time uh, for group uh, Z1 equal to 1. So we can achieve that by using this statement. Z2 equal to log of time times Z1. Because Z1 is uh, like an indicator variable, 0, 1 variable now. OK, after that, uh, we just rerun the um, Cox proportional hazard model. This is the bare bone code, but we added the IT print. So basically, ask the uh, ask SAS to, re to print out the iteration history. So you can see uh, it converges pretty quickly in three steps. Okay, And then you get everything else uh, as standard output. Uh, but the issue is really here, the ties handling is Breslow. 
And uh, we can ask it to handle ties using other method like Afro method. So the only thing you need to do is say ties equal to Afro. Here. Uh, and then you can do ties use discrete. That's another option. Okay, so if you look at the um, like maximum likelihood estimate uh, of three methods, here you get uh, parameter estimate is negative 0 0.618 and p-value is 0 0.1205. For Afrons, uh, you got uh, negative 0 0.6125 and p-value is 0 0.1237. For the discrete, uh, it's a negative 0 0.6294 and p-value is 0 0.1173. So these are a little bit different, uh, you know, among different methods. But if you want to really understand this, go back to the SAS documentation for PHREG. Uh, ties equal to method. So basically it has four methods. Okay, Breslow and discrete and Efron and exact. Okay, so um, Breslow method is a little bit older, um, probably the oldest one, um, and the, that's the default value. And discrete is really you want to replace the hazard model by something called the discrete logistic model. Um, and uh, Afron is another approximation method Afron developed in 1977, and the exact uh, it's really like the exact uh, statistics uh, using all the uh, permutations and so this is very computing uh, intensive. So here in the documentation there's some discussion about different methods. Uh, the exact method can take a considerable amount of computer resources and if ties are not extensive the Efron and Breslow method provide a satisfactory approximation to the exact method for the continuous time scale model. And in general, Efron's approximation gives results that are much closer to the exact method results than Breslow's approximation does. If the time scale is genuinely discrete, you should use discrete method. The discrete method is also required in the analysis of case control studies when there is more than one case in a matched set. Okay. So and if there's no ties, all four methods should be the same, give you the same results. And the Breslow method is the most efficient uh, when there's no ties. So that's kind of uh, um, what I want you to kind of uh, learn for handling ties. So here's another one uh, a little bit uh, more complicated for using graphs to check uh, the proportional hazard assumption to groups. Uh, we, we're going to use the uh, same data, the kidney data set. Uh, so we fit the data set. Um, and uh, we use the output statement to uh, output uh, uh, everything, uh, the time Z1, uh, Z1 log survival uh, to a data set called uh, figure 8.1. And then we do some sorting, some transposing, and uh, calculating a new variable called the difference, which is the difference between the log log of uh, uh, survivor probability. Okay, uh, and then we set up the graphs, and then we plot out the um, plot of the differences between the log transformed uh, hazard function, and basically uh, it's within negative two and two, uh, so it's not really um, you know out, out of control. So we assume uh, the two uh, proportional hazard. Uh, you know, the, the, the two hazards in the two groups are close to each other, okay? So that's one way just to take a look. And there are other, like, tests for proportionality uh, within PROC PH Reg. Uh, you can read uh, uh, some uh, other examples in at the, at the UCLA website, okay? Uh, okay, the last one is uh, we want to use the data set for nine, uh, on 90 males with uh, uh, larynx uh, cancer and I want to show you how to use different uh, test uh, statement. So first let's read in the data set and then do, uh, do another one, uh, do an array statement to create some uh, indicator variables um, for stage. Okay, so if you want to take a look at the newly created uh, data set, so these are the 
uh, Z variable, the indicator variable you created. And then to get the world test, uh, you can simply just run uh, the PH reg and use test Z1, Z2, Z3. Uh, and you can see the um, linear hypothesis testing result. Uh, that's the world test. To get score test, uh, you need to use the select equal to stepwise include equal to one. And then it will run stepwise selection. And eventually, it tells you which which variables are in the model. So the only selected Z1, Z2, Z3 were not entered. And it gave you a score test uh, p-value. Okay. And for likelihood ratio test, a little bit troublesome. You need to calculate two models. Uh, one is with age. And the other stages, or the other one is with age only. So you have nested models. And then you use PROC SQL uh, to actually calculate the uh, negative two times the uh, log likelihood as the likelihood ratio. And now this is the likelihood ratio uh, statistic you compare to the uh, percentiles of a chi-square distribution with a degree of freedom uh, three because uh, the larger model has three more variables. Okay, so I, I leave that to you to determine if, if it's a second efficient or not. And you can get the relative risk uh, uh, limits by just adding the relative risks. Uh, this we did in the first example. And uh, you can test uh, if uh, stage two and three are the same. So by using uh, test equals a Z3 minus Z2 equals zero, or you can test if all the stages are the same uh, by using uh, test equal to Z2, Z3, and Z4. So you can see the first one is not significant, but the second one, it is significant. So 2 and 3 are the same, but 4 seems to be different from others. OK, thank you.